What's up? Brandon here again with Therapeutic Fragrance, uh, doing a fragrance review on the House of Arij Ledor. I mentioned them in my uh, very first video, and today I'm feeling a little rosy, so I have Malik Al Taif. Taif. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Brandon, uh, Therapeutic Fragrance. Uh, thanks for coming back, uh, tuning in if you're watching this. Uh, enjoying this more than I ever thought I would. Uh, so getting into to, uh, you know a rhythm here. Um, this is the fifth time I've worn this fragrance. Wanted to put a review out there on it. It's a special one. Um, just showed the bottle in my intro, but here it is again. In case you skip that part, Malik Al Taif Tough. And I mean, look at the juice in this thing. It is just beautiful. Just dark, juicy. Look at the cap on this thing. That's a stone right there. Teak wood. Cap. My favorite thing, anything with wood is one of my favorite things. Um, I hope he keeps on doing this in all his future uh, bottles that he does. Just a real thick glass bottle. I mean, that's... He could save money on so many things. This is just high quality all around. Leather band around there. Just presentation bar none. I mean, look at that juice. You just... Man, that stuff... That's the stuff of legends. Love dark juice. This is a perfume too. Um, opening uh, this fragrance up, I what I came up with is kind of mixing juicy fruit and a chai tea aromas, if you will. If there's such a thing. It's got this super nice fruity, in a natural way scent that is just yummy off the top a touch of citrus lemony bergamot uh, area of citrus not a heavy lemon um, Sicilian lemon toned down lemon uh, off the top saffron hangs around like it does in food flavors food and, and um, that, that scent just just hangs the perfect amount right there uh, during the whole whiff as you smell you can still pick up saffron I'm, I'm three hours into it so kind of on the dry down um, I've, I've taken notes on this before uh, I've reviewed those so yeah like I, I've, I've gotten to know this one pretty good um, you don't need much to spray on this thing you saw how much juice I had after five wearings it, it's an extrait so yeah over 25 percent concentration in there um the, a very sweet leather comes around in the, the mid tones probably an hour into it uh i i've never smelt a sweet leather before but that, that's what i'm getting this is what i would compare a sweet leather to in the future uh, definitely picking up a nice all natural leather with with that fruity smell that was there in the beginning uh, yeah that's what I get in the mid tones um, yeah it, it's the gold globes were just uh, the other night and um, to play off of that the one thing that I haven't mentioned yet um, th that this thing has is a star is born and the star in this thing is the Taif Rose uh, Eastern culture probably knows all about Taif Rose 
but here in Western culture, rose to us is a totally different thing, especially in perfumery. Uh, I'd love to be corrected if, if anybody else grew up with um, all these exotic roses and, and difference in roses. Um, again, I'm, I'm in the Rose City. Um, that's what we call ourselves, sing about it in our soccer games. Uh, and I've, I've never smelt a rose like this before, ever, never put a, a, nothing to my nose that smells with this much intricacy, this much depth and, and top notes. I mean, the rose itself alone has, has tons of notes um, in it. I'd say it easily has, you know, top and mid notes. You can smell it throughout it. Uh, the dry down, it, it does fade a bit away, and, and your ouds will hang around with that musk that's in there. Um, yeah, I swore I wasn't going to buy another oud and rose combo, because that's, I mean, if every Eastern perfume house that you go to, uh, and you look up their, their, their first perfumeries, or any of their attires, and the first things they do, almost everything they do, oud and rose, oud and rose, oud and rose. But then, with this... You know, I stop and think they're teaching us something. Um, Oud has so much to offer, and, and Rose does also. Th this opened up a whole new thing for Rose, that, that Rose can be so much more than what I know. It can have so many, much, many more notes than I know that a Rose has. Um, yeah, so it, it's, it's funny how Eastern perfumers are still teaching us like, oh yeah, we'll check out this Oud and Rose. And then, then you smell it and it's a totally different perfume. It's almost unfair to, to put that word just Rose in there. You have to really get educated on, on the, the Thai Rose. And we'll get into the actually in intricacies of the Rose and how it was picked, distilled, and all that added to this, this perfume. Over 40% of the composition of the fragrance composition in this is a, a rose composition. Uh, if you follow the IFRA uh, standards that were set in the UK, uh, they're, you, you're only allowed to have 4% if you manufacture and, and make perfumes in the UK and the UE. Um, so 40% is, this is, this is a rare thing. These bottles will get sold out. They're, they're one and done bottles. Uh, not to say he won't make another rose fragrance, but this 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 fragrance is uh, a one of a kind, a collector's piece, a, a true collector's piece that uh, you won't be able to pick up again. Um, I, sh I should have got the satin box. When I do, I'm definitely doing a couple more from this line reviews. I'll make sure to, to show the box that it comes in. Uh, they're cool, nice pillowcase boxes that they come in. Presentation. I'm buying the juice, I'm buying the ingredients, the presentation that uh, Russian Adam puts into these things it, it is above and beyond. It's, it's better than any designer, the, the, that cheap cellophane that comes around. There's none of that here. It's just silk ribbons, silk pillows, and, and nice silk soothing to the hands as you open it. And then, you know, this bottle, bar none, is... I couldn't ask for nothing more. The wood cap does it for me. I mean, that, that is just amazing to me. That's one of my favorite things ever to have that. The, the scent hangs out in that wood. You can just smell the cap as I've done before. Yeah, it's awesome stuff. Um, on this rose, supposedly the, the roses were uh, picked at the perfect time of day and picked with delicate female hands as the story goes um, as, as he puts on his site and um, whatever he's doing yeah keep doing it uh, I buy it I, I buy the story I believe it he's he's getting a scent that I haven't smelled before um, but you can tell that there is definitely so much care that goes into this product that's in this bottle uh, there is uh, other rose, he doesn't say where the other rose is from, but pure rose oil, he calls it, that was cured in uh, traditional camel leather bottles. So that's interesting. And maybe that's where the leather smell comes from. Um, definitely some of the oud notes, 
that, that he lists are, are leathery and smoky ouds. So that's, that's also where the leather could come from. Um, yeah, whatever it took to get the scent in the bottle is uh, definitely underappreciated uh, in our culture. Western perfumery uh, compared to what it takes to get it into like a, a main designer bottle that's out there if you walk in our malls or even the designer boutiques that I was at in Vegas. It takes so much more to get these ingredients into this bottle than it does those you know designer fragrances. Um, he cut his sizes down this this is the from the fourth collection to um, 30 ml from 50 ml and honestly I thought he was going to keep the prices I was like oh that's how he's going to profit and he almost cut the prices the, the same degree as he did with the juice so make it more affordable to more people he offers samples so you do not have to blind buy uh, he, there's not a good indication of, of when these run out or, or whatnot he does say saying low on his website if you do check that out so as soon as it says low um, usually within a week or two it's done so uh, these scents are gone he's using four different ouds in this one uh, Cambodia a Laos and two Indian ouds uh, are in this one um, here's what he has to say, a very, a, a touch of very sweet Cambodian, highly animalic Laotian, wild Laotian oud to enhance the base, and then two varieties of classic Indian oud with leathery and smoky character. So that's where I got that from. Um, there's a musk uh, absolute in this, so there is deer musk in this one that um, legally obtained from Siberian deer musk. Uh, he said he only used a little bit of that because the, the way he uh, got the oil made it very potent and very strong. Uh, there's Siam Benzoin in here. And then uh, this threw me off. So this is the first time I've seen him say this. I wish it was a little more transparent on this one. There's a special synthetic uh, fixative in there. I, I, don't, I don't know what... what could be special synthetic. Um, I, I would love a little more transparency on that ingredient as he's so transparent about his natural ingredients. I thought that was a little, uh, yeah, turned me off a little bit, uh, uh, especially because, I, I mean, I don't buy into hy hyperbole and I loved how he launched it. I didn't view that as hyperbole at all. Uh, there was these whole month every week he would launch uh, these special ingredients and then he'd release the actual name of the perfume that was going to come out. I loved how he did that and because I'm buying the ingredient, that's what I'm buying, I'm buying the juice. I don't want to buy uh, promised compliments and promised this and that. I, I might hit on the hyperbole that's going on out there in the fragrance community but yeah, I, I appreciate how he lists the natural ingredients and goes into grave detail about each one of them. Uh, but the, the synthetic, it, it just got stuck in there. Um, along with a touch of a secret synthetic fixative. So it's easy to pass over. I'm glad he put it there because he did use the synthetic, but I'd like more details on what it is. Um, other than that, um, I'm a fan of everything that's going on. Huge uh, kudos to Russian Adam for acquiring this rose. It's a very luxurious composition. Uh, again, one to have in your collection. They will run out. Uh, I wish he would number the bottles like he did before. Th that, that was fun. Um, I have one from the second collection that is uh, numbered. Um, since they are one and done, it's just fun to, to see who has what number, especially on a, a resale market. It would help uh, authenticate everything. Um, oh, it dry down. Yeah, let's get to the dry down. Here's the notes I have from uh, the dry down. It's, um, I'm almost, to, I can smell the notes from this. You get an awesome, awesome sandalwood that's in here. He's, he lists Mysore. I smell the butteriness of Mysore sandalwood. I put my nose on uh, very aged uh, Mysore sandalwood. This has that buttery, just yumminess that comes with it, that, that medicinal, uh, sandalwood uh, 
yeah, just just you, you're good. Not your barbershop sandalwood you get here in the Western culture, but uh, if you put your nose on Mysore sandalwood or aged sandalwoods, I'm not saying this is listed as Mysore sandalwood, but um, the buttery creaminess comes off of this perfectly off of your skin. Uh, yeah, carried by the musk and benzoin with amber undertones. Very oriental fragrance uh, in a good way. This is what I have uh, for the fragrance. When I pictured who could wear this, my mind in a flash went to uh, the genie from Aladdin. The prince could wear it too from Aladdin. Um, this is just a magic carpet ride of a scent uh, that, that takes you through your day and, and takes you on that magical ride. Uh, thanks Russian Adam for putting this out in the world uh, and letting us smell these rare ingredients that no other way I'd be able to smell these unless you did put this out there. Um, that's about it for me folks. Please uh, give me any suggestions on videos to do in the future. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, keep following the journey. Um, I'll try to include uh, more details as I learn about uh, you know houses that are out there like this. And um, especially, I'm a fan of this one and done, how he's doing it, because you can't replicate these distillations of these fragrances, these, these ouds, and, and the way the rose was done and, and composed will be different next time. So, yeah, let's do this together and enjoy the sense that is the nose. Peace out. Hey, everyone. Um, back here uh, after another workout uh, bonus footage here um, didn't again not intending these videos um, but uh, feel this will add value to the scent and the review uh, on this one um, the, the oud oil the past couple times that I worked out uh, the oud has been such a beautiful thing when I've been working out and just kind of melting into your skin and, and working perfectly with your body chemistry in just different ways, two different oods with just different effects. And it, it's kind of like they just complemented with your body chemistry and just everything that was going, you know, as you're, as all my pulse points and as you're sweating and working out, just, just, just like the, the oud just worked magic with you as you went along. And it did, I couldn't really pick up, I had to put my wrist to my, um, nose to pick up any big scent but just a pleasing smell pleasing throughout the, the whole time i'm i mean i was keeping my heartbeat pretty high like i mentioned you can check out those videos anyways uh back to the um malik al uh, taif tough and um this uh fragrance um now i know why people are like you know don't wear this in hot heat or cold weather uh, kind of thing and why I've stayed away from fragrances it, it, working out. I do have one that I work out with that's just pure citrusy, really nothing else going on. And uh, it, it, I mean, by the time I'm done working out, it fades. And um, that's kind of, I've been scared to wear anything else. You, yeah, this last thing you want to do is, is have this overpowering scent when you're working out. And, and you, the workout's for me, anyways. And I want the scent to be with, with, for me which ouds are. This does have the four ouds in it, so I was really excited to see how the oud and rose was gonna, uh, uh, you know, react. Um, I didn't even have to uh, smell my wrist. Um, the, the silage and projection on this thing was just a beast, way overpowering. Um, and that's saying a lot for me. Even when I heard reviewers say a fragrance has a lot of silage or projection, I'll put it on and I don't pick that up that much. The few that I have in my collection are, are vintage ones. And, and I put them on and I can smell them all day, you know, just, just around me without lifting my arms or whatever, just something you smell wherever you go. And it's not like the smell changes like an oud or, or, or a natural oil. It's just the same fragrance or the same fragrance does change throughout the day, but um, wherever that fr fragrance is at in the top, middle or uh, bottom, that you can move all around that's where the fragrance is at where a natural oil I mean you get a whiff and, and get different aromas I mean within minutes they'll be different and then they'll just keep changing 
just dancing off your skin. Uh, this was this must be the synthetic uh, that, that's in there. That that that's what synthetics are meant to do. That's where they're created is to um, either you know longevity, projection, or slosh. I mean that's that's one of the the, the big features that they've replaced uh, the natural ingredients with. And I, I don't I can't see Russian Adam using a synthetic for any other reason than one of those three. Uh, or reasons to, to his perfume. So you guys that are in the hotter weather, uh, you've been warned. Um, this thing is a beast in hotter weather. It, I, I couldn't stand it. I, I didn't go around people. I picked machines that were way away from people and uh, definitely not something that, that I want to be doing at a gym and, and smelling like. On, on another note, I mean, I put the, when I smelled it off my wrist, the sandalwood that's in here with, with that rose on the finish it's it's still there right now um not not with the heat up sense the heat up effect has gone but that sandalwood just smelled like the best melted butter ever like like before you put butter on popcorn before it goes on popcorn when it's melted um picture that with the sandalwood butteriness just awesome so so that was that was out of this world smelling that I just wish it didn't have the, the proje projection all around me it, it was I mean it was a cloud all over um, uh, I, I mean it didn't like the scent I smelled from my wrist it didn't smell nothing like it it was almost like this oriental I didn't like it cloud at all did not like this in, in, in the higher heat. Um, it's the only, this, this is the fifth time wearing it. It's the only time I've experienced uh, this effect from the scent. So yeah, putting it out there. Hopefully it's, use, hopefully it's useful information. Um, again, enjoy your day and uh, peace out.